I know what they're saying. Oh, Tucker doesn't have it in him. Tucker doesn't have the balls to make merch. Well, what's all this, huh? What's all this then? Hey guys, I made merch. Some of you were asking for that and there's a store for it here. I made it specifically timed so that no one could get it for Black Friday or Christmas. So that was cool of me, but I have merch now. So if you want to check that out, link in the bio. So quick fun fact, there are seven continents on this earth, if you didn't know. So we got North America, South America, Australia, Europe, and Asia. And I feel like those two should be the same continent because there's nothing really dividing them besides race. And that feels like a racist thing. And last but not least, we have Antarctica the basement of our planet and something that people talk about very little. It's an icy wasteland that no one lives on and there is good reason for that. The continent is the coldest place on earth and it's also a desert somehow and it has volcanoes as well and it has a river of blood. So uh, we'll get into that later. It's such a fucked up place that nations don't even fight for it. Can you imagine that? Land that white people don't want. Instead, a bunch of countries signed the Antarctic Treaty in 1959 saying legally that they uh, don't really want it, that you guys can have it, don't worry about it. Because the cold isn't even the worst thing about Antarctica. You know what is the worst thing? Everything else about it. Welcome to hell. It has penguins. Who would've thought? So Antarctica is a science-defying contradiction that deserves the southernmost spot on this planet we call Earth. Because as we all know, the deeper south you go, the closer to hell you get. That's a fact. That's a certified Snapple fact. So let's just talk about the most horrifying facts I could find about this sub-temperature hellhole we call an entire continent. Hi, baby. I love you. Number one is the fact that no one's home. No one lives there. And that's, if you think about it, that's pretty creepy. It's a whole ass continent that nobody lives on. There's not one native population to Antarctica because it's unlivable. And it's a big part of this earth. The average temperature on the interior of the continent, are you falling? The average temperature on the interior of this continent is negative 71 degrees Fahrenheit. What? That's insane. Also, for the rest of this video, I will be using Fahrenheit and not Celsius because I watched enough Top Gear and got confused enough where I feel like I deserve this. I feel like to give a little revenge to people who don't live in America. The shit is so bad that the researchers and scientists have to get their appendixes removed before they go there for an extended period of time. Because if their appendix decides to get all inflamed and burst, then they're shit out of luck because no one is there to help them for miles and miles and miles and miles. You are alone. You might as well be on the fucking moon. You might as well be on the moon when you're in Antarctica because it's easier to get to people. Number two. The sun gives up. The sun gives up down there. It just stops working. The idea of circadian rhythm is non-existent in this hellscape. Antarctica, fun fact, has one sunset a year. One. And then the sun goes away forever. After the sun sets, guess how long the nighttime lasts? Guess. T t t any guesses? It's gonna be six months. Half a year. The sun is gone. This cool little manipulation of time and light leads to researchers experiencing a fun little symptom called, and this is not a joke, Polar madness. Symptoms of polar madness include, but are not limited to, sleep disorders, anxiety, depression, memory impairment, and intellectual inertia, whatever the fuck that means, and anywhere between 40 and 60% of all researchers catch it. It is, it is omnipotent. You cannot run from the darkness. It is relentless. In 1983, a Chilean doctor had a case of polar madness so bad that he just set his entire research facility ablaze, lit it on fire, because he, he just could not understand the concept of what he was doing. I'm, am I conveying how fucking scary this place is yet? Number three, this bitch got volcanoes. I mentioned it earlier, but it, it has volcanoes. There are 138 volcanoes in Antarctica. You'd think an entire continent devoted to ice wouldn't have these things, but old Antarctica has her ways. Luckily, 91 of them are under ice. But unluckily, if one of those things goes off under the ice, then it's gonna have devastating effects on our climate. Just a straight up cataclysmic state if one of those things pops off. So fingies crossed. But there's also a huge volcano above ground too, if you guys were wondering. It's called Mount Erebus and it's super active. That's sick. The summit has a lake of lava that has been flowing since the 70s. So it's the only place on earth that you can go sledding next to a pool of lava. Science be damned. Also the ozone hole that we created that everyone was worried about and it's slowly closing due to humans being cool about it, but it's still existing somewhere. And where does it exist, Tucker? Antarctica, that's correct. So if you happen to go during the day in those six months that it's daytime, uh, your skin will fry like fried chicken under the UV radiation, so that's sick. And also, I didn't have a place to put this fact in the rest of the video, but in the 1910s, a researcher went to Antarctica to study the penguins, and their sexual behaviors were so sick and depraved that he had to write his research in Greek alphabetical code so that the common public could not see what he was writing because they were doing some fucked up shit to penguins. The penguins were doing this shit to penguins. Necrophilia, like fucked up shit. So Antarctica is scary enough on its own. It's dark, it's cold, the visibility from the weather is non-existent so you can't see three feet in front of you most of the time. There's no polar bears, 
Now those are in the top of the earth, but there are leopard seals and those things aren't so chill, notably. But on top of that, there are several nightmare landmarks that you can find in this shit show of a freezer. Truly, Antarctica was God's New Mexico. Just, th just doing experiments and consequences be damned. Number one, we have the singing ice wall. Well, that sounds nice. That sounds sweet. I know it's not gonna be, but it sounds nice right now. So there's this thing called the Ross Ice Shelf, right? Now it appears just to be a massive slab of ice, but it is not just a massive slab of ice. It's also a container of the souls of the damned. And boy, do they like to gossip. Wind blows across the icy dunes at a certain angle, which creates vibrations and also seismic tones. The waves are at a frequency that can't be heard by humans, but we have figured out how to hear it through, you know, technology and oh my God, my God. Let's give it a listen, shall we? Okay, did Squimpus McGrimpus take inspiration from this? Why does uh, Antarctica have analog horror soundscapes? The reason why we listen to this is because scientists can determine whether the ice shelf is going to collapse or not by listening to these sounds, so that's good. It's just literally a harbinger of terrible things to come. God damn. Number two is the blood falls. Remember from earlier, I spoke about it. So this is a waterfall and it's made of blood. That's pretty, that's pretty much it. That's all I gotta say. The Taylor Glacier in Antarctica has this deep river of red that flows through it. So yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what it is. I mean, technically it's iron salts that's pulled from the ice and then when oxygen reacts to it, it turns red. But for 106 years, scientists had no idea. It looked and acted just like blood. So they just said, whatever. They know they didn't tell the public. This seems like a scientific explanation of some shit that people don't actually understand. I refuse to believe that this is not blood. That's a blood river in Antarctica. Number three, there's underground unfrozen lakes, which makes zero fucking sense to me. There are almost 400 subglacial lakes in Antarctica. That was a hard sentence to say. These lakes remain liquid, even though they're under larger sheets of ice, because apparently laws of physics do not apply to Antarctica. The biggest subglacial lake is Lake Vostok. It is two miles under all that ice, and it's Scientists believe it's over 15 million years old. So there's no way a monster doesn't live in that lake. There is no way a monster is not creeping under there. And finally, number four, and what scares me the most is that a big fucking hole. There's just a big fucking hole in Antarctica. In the 1970s, scientists discovered something called the Weddell Polynia, whatever, a hole the size of New Zealand in Antarctica. Here's a picture of New Zealand if you need scale. And the scientists, well, they had no fucking clue why it was there. No big deal, just ice breaking all laws of physics again. It's chill. And then in 1976, it disappeared vanished, which is way more scary. But don't worry, this giant question of a landmark showed back up in 2017 and reappeared. Why the fuck would it do that? With over 40 years of technological advancement, scientists are just now beginning to understand why this thing exists at all. And by scientific advancements, I mean they're putting high-tech cameras on the heads of baby seals. That's what they're doing. We are so fucked. So this is a big tug video, and it wouldn't be a big tug video if I don't talk about the aminals. In the spirit of full disclosure, Antarctica has penguins. Like a lot, like two, 20 million penguins. And I love penguins. Penguins are chill, not the weird ones that I talked about earlier, but most penguins are dope. But we're not gonna talk about the penguins, because that wouldn't be fun for you guys. It would be fun for me, it wouldn't be fun for you guys. Today we're discussing the worst alien demons that have ever walked this earth. And luckily they all tend to reside in Shitholeville, AKA Antarctica. Goddamn, do I hate this place. Up first we have the Antarctic Strawberry Feather Star. Now that sounds adorable and cute, but you and I both know that this is gonna be the worst thing you've ever seen in your life. With a cute name like that, you know that the ichthyologists were having a ball of a time making a joke out of this thing, because this is what it looks like. Whoa! This shake makes me sick, guys. This shit makes me physically ill to look at. The sea creature looks like a cross between a jellyfish and the weird fucked up fingers of the soap lady. It has 20 arms, which is too many arms, that can grow up to eight inches in length from a body that looks like a collection of haunted suction cups. What the fuck is this thing? Some of their arms have feathers. Some of them are bumpy. Truly a tactile choose your own adventure book. Oh, and it has claws. It has claws on its bottom. So if it wasn't already a nightmare, it just looks like living VD and I wish to discuss it no longer. Then we have the scale worm. Ooh, ooh. Let's go back to the weird feather thing. This water worm is flat, it is the size of a squirrel, and it looks like it has teeth all over its body. Jesus Christ. I mean, what makes this a worm? I, it does not look like any worm that I've ever seen before in my life. It looks like a low-level enemy in Half-Life. Its head is at its tail, it has no eyes, and it has a retractable mouth tube full of needle teeth. Fuck! Scientists don't really know what it eats, but it, they do think it hunts. They think it's a predator. Good, it hunts. Good. It can hunt you. It can hunt me. It, just, it will continue to hunt. We have the black fin ice fish. This two and a half foot fish has no scales. Its head looks like a crocodile. Its bones are transparent. Its blood is clear and contains no hemoglobin. They have no idea how this fish gets oxygen to its brain. They don't understand this fish. Its body is literally full of antifreeze, like that shit you put in your car when it gets too cold. It is an anemic ghost crocodile that haunts the worst parts of this earth, and I do not trust it, and I don't want to see it anymore. We have the Death Star. Too many things on this thing, I would say. Technically, this monstrosity is called the Antarctic Sun Starfish, but the scientists who first discovered it called the Death Star, and that's what we're gonna call it. It's two feet in width and has up to 50 arms. 
50. 50. There's not one thing on this earth that needs 50 fucking arms. Its entire body is covered in jaw-like structures that snatches anything that comes near it. It's literally nature's bear trap, except it's fleshy and wiggly. And I'm really struggling with this segment, you guys. This is like one of the worst ones I've done. Finally, we have the Antarctic sea spider, and I'm not even gonna look at it. It's the size of a fucking chihuahua. It's got no face and five pairs of legs, and all of its organs live inside of its legs. Scientists don't know why they exist. They're not related to any other animal on earth, and they've been around for 400 million years. And, and they, they exist only to spite me. And yet we all keep pretending like everything's okay. We keep going to work, we keep paying our taxes, and these things exist. This thing specifically exists. You know, go to bed, everything's okay.